Good morning everybody, this is Lara from Pure Elliott Wave with your Monday to Friday update for Bitcoin, Ethereum and XRP. Before I get into it, if you're not already subscribed and you've just found my channel, I recommend you do so, so that you don't lose my channel, because I'm updating these three for free, five days a week. You're going to get my 16 years experience using technical analysis in Elliott Wave, 11 of those as a chartered market technician, for free, reliably. Just a note, if you're going to ask me questions about this analysis, please first be specific as to which market you're making a que you're asking a question of I've got three in this video and please name the labels the degrees just give me the color or the name blue is minor pink is minute green is minuet orange is subminuet either just tell me the color and the name of the wave so blue x or blue y or pink c within blue x and all degrees that I've got on this chart so I know exactly what question you're asking Questions that are just too vague and don't make sense, I just can't answer your question. Let's get into it. Bitcoin is still within this rectangle. A downward session yesterday, closing lower, has not managed to close below the lower edge of the rectangle. Support is still holding about 60,700. Rectangles, when they're in an upward trend, are two-thirds likely to be a continuation pattern. So there's a 66% chance we're going to see an upward breakout to new all-time highs out of this pattern. There's a 33% chance price could break below, and if it does, I would expect support most likely to hold about the 55 thousand area so an upward breakout is more likely we need to see a close above the resistance zone at 71,500 to 73,100 on an upward session with push from volume to have confidence there's an upward breakout after a breakout we may see a quick back test of support before price moves up and away yesterday's downward session comes with a slight increase in volume beyond the previous upward session but overall as price moves sideways volume continues to decline that's very common during a consolidation and consolidations are a normal to be expected part of a healthy bullish market. The bigger picture for Bitcoin does remain very bullish, particularly at the monthly time frame. After yesterday's close lower, on balance volume has moved lower and it's now at support. The support line now has four tests, it's somewhat long held and it's got a very shallow slope so it's got reasonable technical significance. Initially expect prices at support, on balance volume is at support, this may initiate a bounce and an upward swing within the consolidation. Consolidation. If we see another red candlestick for the next session, we're going to possibly see a break below support from on balance volume. If on balance volume breaks out first, that would give us an advance warning of a downward breakout from the rectangle and we'd look for support at 55,000. But if we see a green candlestick for the current session of 18th of April, then on balance volume will bounce up from support here, increasing the technical significance of that line. And then we would expect an upward swing within the consolidation toward resistance. ADX tells us there is now a downward trend. Price is essentially moving sideways though, so ADX tells us a downward breakout is more likely than upward. But remember the probability of an upward breakout for that pattern is 66% likely. RSI is neutral, it's not yet near oversold, so we could see further downward movement. There is room for price to continue lower before RSI reaches oversold. There's room for price to continue lower before money flow reaches oversold. With recent downward movement over the last few days, we saw some increase in volume and an increase in range. There is strength in recent downward movement to support, suggesting a downward breakout may occur. That's 33% likely, but it does have a little bit of support from ATR and ADX and volume. Prices at support. Stochastics is almost oversold. We could see an end of the downward swing within the rectangle here and the start of an upward swing to resistance. The Elliott Wave count for Ethereum. Someone's asked me a question, why am I not labelling this minor wave 3 and 4 like this? An extremely valid question and the reason is because for in primary wave 3, one of the core Elliott Wave rules states it must move beyond the end of primary wave 1 and then primary 3 has to move far enough beyond the end of primary wave 1 to allow primary 4 to unfold and remain above first wave price territory. There's usually a really big gap between the fourth wave and the first wave within an impulse for cryptocurrencies. Here's intermediate 4, intermediate 1. There's a huge gap between them. And so if I'm going to label minor wave 3 complete here, which is absolutely valid, and it could be, I think it's just less likely for the middle of the third wave to have passed before it's moved beyond the end of the first wave. Because labelling minor 3 complete here sees the middle of primary wave 3 
over complete back down here now that is possible I think it's just less likely than labeling it incomplete like this looking at the structure of minute wave 2 which could also be minor wave 4 that's also possible as I just outlined the structure of minute wave 2 at the daily time frame looking at the detail it's unfolding as a zigzag a b c a likely an impulse in there b a double combination and C may now be unfolding as a simple impulse now it could be complete down here or we could have the fourth wave completing and then the fifth wave still to unfold the fifth wave if we do see another low would most likely find support at the lower edge of the Elliott channel which have drawn from the start of A to the end of B with a copy on the end of A so look for support at this trend line if we do see one more low for the short term minute or minuet wave C sorry green is minuet Minuet wave C must subdivide as a five wave motive structure. I'm labeling that sub minuet 1, sub minuet 2, sub minuet 3, sub minuet 4, sub minuet 5 may still be needed to complete lower. Sub minuet 4, if it continues, may not move into sub minuet wave 1 price territory above 3413.05. So for the short term, if we get a new high above this point, before a new low, then I would label the pullback for my new wave 2 complete. I would have 1, 2, 3 four in here brief and shallow and a final fifth wave down this could be correct so i'm going to use this price point as a line in the sand for ethereum's elliott wave count a new high above 3413.05 prior to a new low would tell us the pullback may likely be complete now it would still be possible that minute wave two that's the pink degree this one could continue lower as a double zigzag but if it's complete down here, it has really good proportion to minor wave 2, 1 degree higher, and minute wave 1 that it's correcting, so it would most likely be complete as a single zigzag. But the possibility of it continuing lower for a double zigzag does exist, and that would be the risk. Ethereum is not in a rectangle pattern because this has got a downward bias. It's in a pullback, which is relieving extreme conditions. The upward trend back up here did become very extreme. RSI and money flow both were overbought. Money flow exhibited multiple bearish divergence. So this pullback, which is a normal part of a healthy bullish market, has relieved extreme conditions. Yesterday, prices closed above below what was previously support at 3050. That now becomes resistance. Look for next support at 2720. Price is moving slightly lower with declining volume. There is now weakness in downward movement suggesting the low could be in place. The last signal from on balance volume was a very weak bearish signal that could now be resolved. ADX is now telling us there's a downward trend for Ethereum. For the short term this may be a downward trend within the larger bigger picture a larger bull market. Higher time frames are still bullish. Price is continuing lower. RSI is not quite yet oversold. If it does reach oversold, I'd expect the pullback to be complete. And there's a ways to go yet before money flow reaches oversold. With recent strong downward movement, there was an increase in volume and range. There was strength in downward movement, suggesting we could get more downward movement. But the last couple of red candlesticks are now particularly weak. The main Elliott wave count for XRP still sees a double combination completing further for intermediate wave 2. The first structure in the double, that's blue, labelled minor wave W. The double is joined by a 3 in the opposite direction labelled X. This blue label is minor wave X made up of minute pink A, minute B, minute C. Minor wave Y subdividing as a regular flat correction with minute wave A, that's the pink, a zigzag. Minute wave B, a 100% correction of minute wave A. And minute wave C may be an incomplete 5 wave impulse with green minuet 1, 2, 3, Four, we may see a little triangle complete sideways for four and then a final fifth wave down to one final low to complete this whole structure for intermediate wave two. I outlined on Ethereum how I'm using the Elliott wave structure of an impulse to give me a guide as to whether or not the pullback is complete. I'm using the same idea for XRP. Minute, that's pink, wave, wave C must subdivide as a five wave motive structure. It could be one, two, three, four, five, four may not move into one price territory above 0.5688. If we see a new high above 0.5688 prior to a new low, then I would label intermediate wave two complete at the low for 13th of April. And the pullback should be complete and a third wave up should be in its early days. Technicals for XRP. We had up the, at this high, we had an upward trend. Now we're seeing a pullback within the larger sideways consolidation. XRP is not as bullish as the other two, and at the monthly time frame, it's been, a, been in a huge consolidation for years. So far, this is a downward swing within, in the consolidation. There was a pennant pattern here. The target was 0.4437. That was met and slightly overshot. We might be seeing another little pennant pattern unfold here. I'll give this another day or two, 
and if we see a downward breakout I'll calculate a target for you but for now early days I've got a question mark about this potential pennant if this is a pennant then the flagpole starts here ends here we'd add that direction that distance to the breakout point and there we would get our target I'll calculate that target for you possibly in the next coming day or so two or three I just want to see how this potential pennant is unfolding You've got to be a bit careful with pennants and flags you've got to be willing to adjust your trend lines a pennant can turn into a flag and you can they can take for the best performing ones up to 15 sessions to complete so very early days and I'll keep an eye on this in coming days support currently at 49 support below that at 46 resistance above fairly technically strong in the 54 55 cent range as price is moving sideways within this potential pennant overall volume is declining there is now some weakness in sideways movement after previous downward strength to that last low for XRP pushing price price lower. On balance volume has no new range, there's no new signal. The bearish result from the bearish signal is probably now resolved. ADX tells us XRP at this time frame is now in a downward trend. RSI reached oversold. If we do see one more low I'll be looking for bullish divergence between price and RSI and if that occurs then I'll have some reasonable confidence a sustainable low has been found. But right now we only have oversold RSI. This doesn't occur very often on the daily time frame and is either at or very close to sustainable lows. That's it from me with your quick update today. I hope everyone's having a lovely day.